in the quiet hours before sunrise, when factory floors are still cold and shadows stretch long across concrete, something unusual began taking shape at a site long studied by analysts, drone pilots, and seasoned watchers of Tesla's manufacturing rhythms. At first, there were only subtle clues, the kind of signals invisible to anyone not accustomed to reading the movements of a company that rarely reveals its intentions directly. Satellite images captured faint outlines of equipment delivered under tarps. Supplier shipments shifted their patterns by a margin too narrow for ordinary eyes to detect, yet unmistakable to those who had followed Tesla's history through many cycles of innovation. Internal memos whispered of a rapid build, one that did not align with earlier projections. Something was being assembled, and it was coming together far faster than expected. Torque Element known for its steady, thoughtful reporting style, began chronicling the development with the tone of a seasoned narrator guiding viewers through the opening sequence of a documentary. This new undertaking was different, the host explained, not because Tesla was building another production line, but because the one rising now was designed with a specific purpose, a specific audience, and a specific philosophy that stretched across generational boundaries. The Tesla Model 2 Senior Edition, a vehicle intended to serve older drivers, was finally taking physical shape. But the real story was not its existence. The real story was the velocity behind its creation, a speed so unusual that it sent ripples through industry watchers who understood that automotive manufacturing rarely moves with such urgency. The question resting on the minds of many viewers especially those past their middle years, was simple yet profound. Was this new senior edition truly engineered for people their age, people who understood comfort, reliability, and independence not as luxuries, but as the pillars of their daily lives? And if Tesla was moving so aggressively, when would these vehicles begin appearing on actual American roads, not as rumors or prototypes, but as machines ready to serve the public? Torque Element began its cinematic narration by describing the birth of the production line as if introducing the assembly of a spacecraft. In many ways, that comparison was fitting. Tesla had not retrofitted an older, slower line. It had not dusted off unused conveyor belts or adapted legacy tooling. Instead, the company had created a hybrid style of manufacturing that blended linear flow with modular cells forming a network of interdependent stations capable of isolating errors, absorbing shocks, and continuing operations, even when one section required recalibration. Most automakers build compact vehicle lines by threading slow conveyors through cavernous buildings, adding parts step by step in a long, uninterrupted flow. Tesla chose a different path. It built a chain of five interconnected modules, each capable of functioning independently, each buffered by micro-holding zones that kept the line alive even when one part paused. This was not simply efficient, it was resilient. Older drivers understood resilience intimately, and perhaps that was why the new line felt symbolically fitting. It was engineered to endure interruptions without breaking rhythm, to adapt to stress without collapsing much like the people it was ultimately meant to serve. From the cinematic perspective of Torque Elements narration, the heart of this line appeared almost like a set piece from an industrial epic. Two enormous casting presses, their frames gleaming under the warehouse lighting, towered over the floor like metallic monoliths. These presses were crafted by a company long known for supplying tools capable of shaping metal with forces so immense they bordered on the mythic. Each press rested on reinforced foundations layered with vibration-dampening plates, allowing them to operate at extraordinary speed without destabilizing the surrounding equipment. Instead of welding together hundreds of individual stamped parts, a practice that defined the automotive industry for generations, the presses collapsed those hundreds of components into two enormous casted structures. The cinematic imagery was striking, Molten alloy flowing into molds like liquid fire, forming the skeleton of a vehicle built for ease, comfort, and durability. The alloy itself had been gently reformulated, 
its brittleness subtly reduced, its flow dynamics improved, and its unnecessary weight trimmed away with almost artistic precision. The castings cooled into shapes smoother and stronger than the arrays of pieces they replaced, each one forming a cornerstone of a vehicle that promised to serve its owner with longevity. From there, the line flowed into a robotic machining corridor, a narrow metallic passage where precise arms moved with a choreography that felt more like dance than manufacturing. Fans, cutters, and drills shaped mounting points, smoothing edges with motions so clean they barely seemed mechanical at all. The corridor, significantly shorter than those used by European rivals, reflected Tesla's commitment to minimal travel distance. Every meter saved translated into a reduction in production time. Every reduction in time translated into a capacity increase. And every capacity increase brought the Model 2 Senior Edition one step closer to reality for the older drivers awaiting it. Torque Element lingered on this portion of the story with deliberate depth, knowing that many viewers had spent lifetimes watching industries evolve, expand, and occasionally crumble. They understood craftsmanship. They understood assembly. They knew what it meant to reduce waste, improve precision, and build systems designed not for flashiness, but for endurance. After machining, the cinematic camera of Torque Elements narration moved to the battery integration zone, illuminated by the glow of synchronized lifting arms. Tesla had not adopted the wide deck battery approach common in previous models. Instead, it used a narrow pack design that aligned perfectly with the senior edition's ergonomic interior. The battery lifted into the frame with an accuracy margin so slim it would have been inconceivable to earlier generations of automakers. Because the casted frame was so precise, the battery required no additional shimming, no manual adjustment, no last-minute corrections. It simply bolted into place like a puzzle piece snapping perfectly into its home. Then came the section of the line that defined the senior edition's personality more than any other, the ergonomic cabin module. Older drivers often describe comfort as more than softness or luxury. To them, Comfort means ease of movement, reduced strain, reliability, patience. Tesla embraced this truth by building a cabin module that existed as a complete block before entering the frame. Hinges with lower resistance. Seat rails that opened wider. Door mechanisms that required less effort. A softer load glove box designed for people whose joints may no longer bear weight the way they once did. Steering linkages tuned for smoothness rather than aggression. Torque Element described the module's installation with cinematic reverence, comparing it to the gentle fitting of a pressurized module into the body of an aircraft. The cabin slid into place in a single robotic movement, ensuring consistency across thousands of vehicles. For an older demographic, consistency meant trust. Trust meant independence. The documentary tone deepened as Torque Element explained the modular configuration of the entire production system. If one module faltered, the others remained alive. If one section required recalibration, the line could continue in partial throughput mode rather than collapsing altogether. This flexibility allowed Tesla to maintain pace without threatening quality. The approach was elegant, strategic, and undeniably disruptive to legacy automakers still constrained by traditional conveyor architecture. Then, as the documentary progressed, the focus shifted from manufacturing mechanics to chemistry, the unseen force that would shape the vehicle's soul. Torque Element approached the battery strategies with the tone of a historian, chronicling an era of scientific transformation. Tesla appeared ready to deploy not one but three different battery chemistries. The backbone would remain lithium iron phosphate, a chemistry known for stability and longevity. The packs would be modest in energy, enough to meet practical range expectations while prioritizing safety and life cycle. Lithium iron phosphate was a chemistry older drivers could trust. It did not degrade quickly. It tolerated thousands of cycles. It aged gracefully. The second chemistry was sodium. 
slightly lower in energy density but dramatically more resilient in cold weather, an attribute long appreciated by drivers in northern climates. For older individuals who disliked the unpredictability of winter performance, sodium offered a kind of reassurance that no number on a spec sheet could fully capture. The third chemistry belonged to the realm of early experimentation, aluminum. Though not ready to power entire vehicles alone, aluminum cells displayed near-mythical recharge speeds in controlled environments. Tesla's approach appeared strategic. Instead of relying fully on aluminum, the company seemed to be preparing a hybrid layer, an auxiliary module that could recharge almost instantly during errands, providing short bursts of range for daily tasks. Torque Element narrated this with a sense of intrigue, not excitement, not hype, intrigue, because intrigue was the emotion older viewers understood best. They had lived through decades where claims were abundant and proofs were rare. This approach, thoughtful, cautious, experimental, felt grounded. As the documentary unfolded, the timeline analysis began. Tesla followed patterns, predictable in their unpredictability. When a line entered calibration mode, it often took roughly a year before full production began. Historical comparisons to major model launches offered clues. Observers studying press activation cycles, supplier timing, and engineering pace arrived at a projected release window not guaranteed, but highly plausible. Torque Element wove these observations into a cinematic tapestry. The host spoke of first test vehicles appearing on roads months before any official unveiling. These cars, cloaked in partial camouflage, would be the first physical proof that the speculation was real. The imagery of those early sightings, headlights slipping through misty mornings, cast a tone of quiet suspense. The documentary's final chapter brought the narrative full circle. The senior edition was not simply a product. It was a philosophical shift, a recognition that older drivers deserved more than token upgrades. They deserved vehicles engineered with dignity, comfort, and longevity as foundational principles. Torque Element closed the piece with reflective calm. The production line was alive. The chemistry experiments were maturing. The timeline was forming. And for the first time in a long time, an entire generation of drivers could look at emerging technology not with apprehension, but with anticipation. Because the senior edition was not built to replace their past. It was built to honor it. It was built to carry them forward without asking them to abandon what they understood, what they valued, or who they had become. And with that, the documentary faded to its final thought. The future does not belong only to the young. It belongs to anyone who still has places to go.